Hello, I'm David Ringstrom, a CPA in Atlanta, Georgia, and an instructor for CPE Link. I present the Beyond VLOOKUP webcast, and in this, in the next couple minutes, I want to give you a small preview of some of the material that I cover in that webcast. Let me first show you a technique that I often use to improve the integrity of my VLOOKUP functions when I use VLOOKUP. Notice that on row four, I've listed the traditional way that folks would use VLOOKUP, where they'd say equals VLOOKUP, refer to cell A3 in this case, tell if they want to look at the data worksheet at cells A5 through BR35, return data from the 70th column, and have an exact match. Notice instead on row five, what I do is I leave out the row numbers. What this means is that Excel will look at all of column A through BR, and so if later I add more rows, I don't have to go back and amend my VLOOKUP function. The next thing that I like to do when I use VLOOKUP is notice that on row 9, I'm using the traditional method of counting the columns. And when, for small tables, it's not a big deal. If you have, if, you know, if you're looking at a list of three or four columns of data, then, you know, it's easy to say, okay, I want data from column 4. But when you have a big table like I have where it goes out to column BR, then it's kind of a pain figuring out which column number you want. And so instead of putting the column number like 70, what we can do instead is use the column worksheet function where we sit, we just embed column and then give it an address of a cell within that column. And what that does is that returns the numeric value of 70 instead of us hard coding that. A benefit to this approach is that if we delete some rows from our table, or actually delete some columns from our table, the column function will adjust automatically, and that way our data, our VLOOKUP function will still look at the proper column of data. Conversely, if you hard code your column number to 70 and then you delete some columns from it, you're probably going to get a ref error because you won't have 70 columns in your in your table anymore. And so using the column function can improve the integrity of your VLOOKUP functions. Now let's look at handling errors in our VLOOKUP function. Notice that in cell A13, I misspelled the name of the county. If I had not used an is in A function as I'm demonstrating here, then I would have had a pound in A error in cell B13. Now notice that when I fix the spelling of that county, that we're going to see that it returns the proper value. So inside the if statement, if you use is in A, put your VLOOKUP inside the is in A, you can then, in this case, I told it to put a zero if it is, if, if, if is in A is true, meaning the VLOOKUP did return in A, or if it returns false, meaning it actually returned the value, then we repeat our VLOOKUP. Now, it's a little bit convoluted, but this is the approach we have to use if we are using Excel 2003 or earlier, or we're sharing our documents with someone using Excel 2003 or earlier. If we're using Excel 2007 or 2010, there's a much cleaner approach, and it's a new worksheet function called if error. So what we just say is we say if error, put our VLOOKUP inside that, and then after the comma, tell it what to display if there is an error. So I like if error a lot, but I can only use it if I know that the workbook is not going to get shared with someone using an earlier version of Excel. Thanks for watching. As the title suggests, in Beyond VLOOKUP, I also demonstrate how to use match and index. Some product actually can be used as a lookup function. We talk about the large and small functions, the frequency function, and really show you lots of different ways to use lookup functions in your work. So I hope you'll attend and look forward to seeing you online.